the door on all of it. You bought a Lamborghini on eBay? That's what I live for. Watch the What's in that garage? What's in that garage? Hey there, I'm Christy McDonald, and welcome to What's in That Garage. We're here at the M1 Concourse, surrounded by some serious horsepower. It's the perfect place to introduce you to our streaming series on Local 4 that's dedicated to speed demons, classic collectors, and gearheads all across Michigan. You know, behind every car, there's a story, and we're finding them one garage at a time. Some garages are straight up glamour like this one. Others are pure nostalgia. But for this first story, we're heading to Northern Oakland County to see Seb's garage, which is pretty much a love letter to Ferrari. All right, here we go. Looks like a perfectly nice house. Three car garage, pretty impressive. Hey Seb, Christy, Christy McDonald. Yeah, pleasure, pleasure to see you. looks very nice it looks completely normal like there could be a lot of patio furniture in here <laughs> that, tell me that's not the case uh, there's some <laughs> <laughs> just a little bit so yeah. um how long have you been working on what's in that garage oh golly i mean started about 20 years ago yeah and uh, it's been growing since <laughs> all right so you're going to show me what's in that garage all right all right I can't which wait. one do you want to see first oh my god wait which one <laughs> see so you know it's going to be good if it's which one all right. i want to see all of it hit the door on all of it Seth. all right This is Whoa, this a is Ferrari a full F12. service here. Okay. <laughs> An F12, 2014. Just got this one about uh, a year ago. A year ago? Mm -hmm. Where'd you find it? Uh, I found it uh, in Plano, Texas. Really? Yes, yes. Uh, it was actually uh, it was the car of an older gentleman who passed away and then his wife were up for sale. And I've been looking for one for probably close to five years. Uh, at the right price, and this one, you know, came up. did it. This car here, you know, uh, creates about 740 horsepower. You step on it, and it just takes off. How many tickets? We don't say. We don't say. <laughs> this is uh, called a Modena yellow. Okay. That's where Ferrari uh, originated. And uh, it's a 2009 uh, 430 Scuderia. Tell me what makes this so unique. Well, uh, this car here, uh, Ferrari began building 430s in 2006. This is a 2009. They decided to make a version of it that is more for track. Mm -hmm. And, and so it's and not going to the grocery store. And not going to the grocery no, store. No, okay. <laughs> but you can. <laughs> This one here is even more special okay. because it's got two superchargers in it. How fast have you taken that car? Uh, well, as long as the police don't track me down. That's right, exactly. <laughs> it's probably close to 150. Okay. <laughs> this is my first Ferrari, Ferrari 512 TR. When you buy your first car of a collecting type that you've always wanted to get, what's the feeling? Oh, it's just exuberance. <laughs> Cars alone, looking around this space, it is. this is a love letter to Ferrari. I'm a Ferrari fan, uh, have been since I was a little kid. And then, you know, once you get infected with a bug... <laughs> Are you telling you me that could... there's a Ferrari virus that we <laughs> might be virus. catching being you, you in may this be garage right it. now? Yes, yes. <laughs> and most of the reason for that is because of you see the lines and you see the curves, um, the roundness. Mm -hmm. uh, in comparison, say, to a Lamborghini, which is very sharp angles. Mm -hmm. That's not my favorite. I wanted to build something that, you know, I could bring my friends here. So you could just and sit and you can look at the cars. Look at the cars <laughs> and watch the races. When I bought this house. It had a five-car garage. And, of course, that was not enough. So... Uh, <laughs> Said only rarely few people. <laughs> so, oh finish. my God, no way! I had no idea. <laughs> I thought it was just this. This is uh, a Ferrari 458 2015 model. 
Jeez. And uh, it's a race car, yeah. which I race. You know, in the news business, uh, we call this burying the lead. You <laughs> bury the lead that you actually you race these things. Yes. I, I bought this car in 2017, and uh, I started racing it afterwards. So I, I usually do about three, four races a year. When you're racing Ferraris, uh, it's crazy expensive. If something needs to be replaced or if you hit something, uh, then you know the cost becomes. Uh, Are you just gonna say for everybody who's had to like replace the tires, hit a pothole right now? They're cringing. <laughs> listening to this, going, "Oh my well, god!" Well, a set of tires uh, for a race uh, is about uh, three thousand okay. um, dollars, uh, okay. <laughs> uh, and you know all the shop that. prep. I mean, the, the dollars add up quite, quite, quite yeah. fast. But this you know, what so are you gonna cool. do with your money? Leave it to your kids. <laughs> This is a uh, Fiat Cinco, uh, 600, uh, say 600. After seeing it, I just said, oh, look how safe <laughs> that is. And, and of course, you know, where I grew up in Sicily, this was common, you know, it was the general mode of transportation yeah. for people. So why don't you sit down there? All right. <laughs> Notice how Seb let me sit in the Fiat. He didn't let me sit in any of the Ferraris. I mean, I wonder why he didn't want to give me any ideas. This is a 1970 Corvette. Uh, this is my first sports car that I got back in uh, 1982, I believe. Your uh, first sports car? First sports car. When I first got it, it was painted in orange. I had some you know, Yankee bad striping. Yeah. <laughs> Yankee stripes. And, <laughs> well, it was and... the 70s, Seb. We got you know, to throw it out there. This is a Jaguar. Yes. It's a uh, 1960 Mark IX, so-called saloon car. Oh my God. And uh, I call this the Queen Mom's car. <laughs> <laughs> I got this car in 2012. I was in uh, Austin, Texas racing, mm -hmm. and there was an auction going on at the racetrack. From where I sat, it looked beautiful. Uh, it is a beautiful car. Yeah. Uh, rotating around on a spindle, and um, and I bid, uh, and I was the only bidder. <laughs> <laughs> Got the car for thirteen thousand dollars, which I was reasonable. Yeah. It's uh, fun to go on a picnic, and then you have the picnic tables <laughs> <laughs> in the back. For those of us that remember the commercials, the Grey Poupon. Yes, but of uh, course. That that was what kind of car they used to use. This is my wife's sports car. This is a Dodge Stealth. Stealth, yeah, I was going to say this is a Stealth. Twin Turbo. Uh, and I'm doing some work on it to do some uh, electronics uh, tend to wear out on these cars pretty quick. So uh, I'm doing some work. I need to do some restoration on it. But it's still a beautiful car. I love to yeah. drive this car as well. Uh, the Twin Turbos really give it a lot of power mm -hmm. and it's fun. So you let me sit in the Fiat. Is there is there any one of these Ferraris that I could, I don't know, maybe sit in? Yes, I have you know, one. You do, I think you do? it would work for you. There's another one. And uh, it, uh, it I, I think the right size too. Uh, right here. Wait, whoa! <laughs> Wait, that's the only Ferrari that I get to drive around here, Seb. You can try and sit it. <laughs> if I do. This is what's in my garage. You know, just a few little toys. Coming up, Kevin's need to collect unique cars all came from his dad and his 47 Ford Coupe. You drive down the road and it's got, you know, again, the uh, it's a very bouncy suspension, you know, but it's like a quintessential hot rod. Plus the head turner at car shows coming up. And then Janet finds her brother's long lost Corvette. We saw the car pass us on Five Mile. And I said to John, I go, John, wasn't that Ronnie's car? It's an incredible lost and found. That's when What's in That Garage continues.
Welcome back to What's in That Garage. You know, for a lot of us, our love of cars come from our parents. And for Kevin, that's his story. It started off with the memory of his dad's 47 Ford Coupe. And then his collection just grew from there. So let's head on out to Macomb County, hit the opener on Kevin's Garage, where we see a pretty unique collection and the longest car we've ever seen. Okay, I love this because I see a four-car garage right now, so I know it's gonna be good. Hey, Kevin! We're here. It's good to see you. <laughs> nice to see you. So how did you become a car guy? Well, what's the story? That's hard to describe. Because I see the shirt that says Twisted Axle Car Club here. Yes. Uh, <laughs> um, so pretty much my whole life I've been into cars. Uh, my father was a car guy when I was little. Yeah. Um, unfortunately, he passed uh, back in 81. Um, but you know, it's kind of just been, you know, in me ever since. I mean, yeah, and what's the what's the memory with him that you always picture? It, you know, honestly, it was always, a lot of it had to do with the car. He had a 47 Ford Coupe, uh -huh. um, and I remember as a little kid sitting in the back, you know, big bouncy suspension <laughs> yeah. bouncing around and, you know, working on it, you know, the three on the tree and everything from, you know, when he tried to start it the first time and, you know, we were getting pulled behind an old pickup truck and he was dumping the clutch and the car was hopping and just <laughs> crazy memories, but, uh, you know, that seems to be you know, some of the main memories I have of him. So then what made you start saying, all right, I'm going to start filling up this garage here? Um, just looking for something different. Um, you know, my uh, uh, wife and I, we started talking. I'm like, you know, I really miss the car. You know, uh, we had we still had the 47 from my father. Um, it was just taking forever. So we started going through, and she's like, well, what kind of car are you looking for? And I'm like, you know, it's hard for me to say. I just, I want something different. Well, what does that mean? And I'm like, <laughs> Like, I want something that's unique. You know, so many people, I mean, you know, again, great cars, but the Camaros, the Mustangs, the Corvettes, everyone has those. Everyone chooses them because they're great cars, but I want something different. All right, what is in that garage? Oh my God! <laughs> Yeah, so this is my 47 Ford Super Deluxe Coupe. Um, it is done as a 50s custom hot rod in that it still has the straight axle. It does have a disc brake conversion. Um, the motor that's in this one is actually a first generation uh, Buick nail head. It's a 322, which back in the 50s, that was one of the go-to motors. The color, though. It's, the I, color. Oh, yes, the orange. It's uh, and, and it's crazy Ooh. because in the sun, it turns orange, but in the right light, it'll almost turn red. So it, it's uh, mm -hmm. a very unique color. Very original intent. You know, the, uh, the almost like an art deco, the chrome, the dash, it's still three on the tree, which is, you know, kind of a, a you know, a lot of people don't know how to drive sticks, not to mention three on the tree. Yeah. You know, it's, uh, you, you drive down the road and it's got, you know, again, the uh, it's a very bouncy suspension, you know, but it's like a quintessential hot rod. Yeah. This is a uh, 65 Buick Riviera. This is slick. It's a beautiful balance between luxury and muscle car. Yeah. It's, uh, they used to call it the uh, banker's hot rod. Uh, this one was actually done by uh, um, Bill Mitchell, um, who was the, uh, the designer for General Motors at the time. Mm -hmm. and, and there's all sorts of little details, like the, the sharp corner actually came from uh, Rolls Royce at the time. Um, and you know, it has like some influence some from uh, some of the early Ferraris. And What's your favorite part about this car? Hard to say. Honestly, probably the paint. Um, the 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 paint on this, you know, the the black. It's uh, black is such a hard color to do. Mm -hmm. And when when this one was done, a lot of extra time was done just, you know, blocking it. As you can see, it's almost like a near finish. When you go to a car show, it's often the only one. You know, there's people that'll walk up and they'll be like, "What? What is this?" You know, it's, it's <laughs> you know, I mean, they can, you know, they'll see the R. There's, there's a Buick tag, but all the all the Riviera uh, uh, emblems are stripped, so it's. Uh, so, what is your car tip for everyone with a black car out there, <clears throat> My, myself included, to keeping <laughs> keeping a black car clean? Be ready to dust it constantly, and stay away from trees if they're leaking sap. That took forever, so. Do you have a California duster? I do. <laughs> do this is my big fin baby. Um, my uh, 1960 Imperial um, Custom Southampton. How long is this thing? It's just under 19 feet. It is, uh, <laughs> I believe, 228 inches. Oh my God. 
It's like it keeps going, it keeps going. On the bright side though, when you go to a car show and they're doing the 50-50 yeah. raffle, I don't know, they'll, they often will have like, you know, five for 10 or for 10 bucks they do the length of your car. Yeah, they hate no. me. They hate you. <laughs> <laughs> explain the era and explain what they were doing at this time. They were doing such over elaborate things just to showcase what they could do. Right. And, and that is this era, both, you know, you know, all of them, you know, uh, you know General Motors, Chrysler, Ford, all of them. Um, you know, and this car, the Imperial uh, Chrysler, was doing everything they could to compete with Cadillac. They wanted to beat them so badly. Um, <laughs> and, you know, as far as numbers, they never did. But personally, I feel as far as the beauty of the car, I mean, this is one of my favorite cars of all time. And you were looking for the big boat fin car. Yes, I was. <laughs> what are um, some of the looks? you get as we were going the car next to me you know kind of like honked his horn and i looked over and he went chef's kiss kevin well what's the thrill of driving for you when i was younger of course going fast is the passion and right. maybe i'm getting old i don't i don't so much enjoy that as much as i did and all of them all of them have their unique feel and their unique vibe if you will it, it, you know these it, you, again just getting there is the experience So that's what's in my garage. Coming up next, Janet is a huge What's in That Garage fan, and she shared how a family's Corvette was lost, then found. I swear to God, I feel like Ronnie is riding here with us, right here in the middle. The unique story behind this 62 Restomod. That's when What's in That Garage comes right back. Welcome back. This next story kind of made me tear up a little bit. You know that we connect cars with people, and when people pass away, sometimes those cars connect even more to us. Well, Janet is from a Corvette family, and her brother Ronnie had a very special Corvette. When he died, it was sold, but you'll never believe where Janet found that Corvette next. All right, we're here, and I mean, and this isn't even the car that we're supposed to see, so you gotta know that we have now stepped into Corvette Nation here today. Oh my God, that's beautiful. I'm sure we're gonna talk about this one. Janet, Christy. John, hi. hi. How are you? Good, nice to meet you. It's really nice to meet both of you. And thanks so much. I mean, we've got the, uh, we've got the four car bank, so uh, I'm only thinking that it's gonna get better once we pop this open. I, I think so. <laughs> and the shirt. Janet, and, you've and already given it away from the shirt. And the shirt. What and is the it shirt. about that you have a Corvette family? We have a Corvette family. Um, my brother started yeah. it back in 1969, and um, we've just kind of continued on the, the tradition. It's the American icon. Yeah, yeah it is. It. It's the American icon. What better sports car in the world is there but the American icon? Part of it also is why we love certain cars is the nostalgia of it. And so when you say that you're a Corvette family and what we're going to see inside this garage holds really special meaning for you, this was your brother's car. It was. It was my brother's car. Um, he spent five years um, restoring, my brother Ronnie um, spent five years restoring this vehicle meticulously. He had some fun with it. Uh, he had it for about three or four years and then sadly he passed away. And um, shortly after he passed away, his widow sold the car outside the family. Mm -hmm. And that must have been hard. Understandable, but really hard. It was really hard. It was really hard. As a matter of fact, how we found out the car was sold, we saw the car pass us on Five Mile. And I said to John, I go, John, wasn't that Ronnie's car? And he said, yeah, I think it was. I go, what the heck? What, what, what's it doing here? So we followed it and we found out that it had been sold to a dealership right up the street. So fast forward to this year. So this year, so I'm sitting in my chair one Sunday night, bored out of my mind. There's nothing on TV. And all of a sudden I start thinking about Ronnie's car. I don't, I don't know why, but I did. And so I decided to Google 1962 Corvette Resto Mod and shockingly, it popped up as being up for auction on, this was May 7th, oh and God. it was gonna be auctioned on May 19th, which it was our wedding anniversary. Oh gosh. And um, it was gonna be auctioned at Mecom in Indianapolis. I says, I think we should get it. He said, let's go get it. Yep. Let's go get it, let's go bring it, needs it home. To, it needs to be back home where it belongs. with the family. 
I start bawling my eyes out just yeah. just seeing it again. And um, it was it was very emotional. We've seen quite a few Corvettes, but very few where it came as nicely as this from 1962. So when that car came up, you guys got the winning bid. We did. We did. And that moment for you? That moment for me was the most exhilarating, incredible, um, just in, again, and I keep using the word intoxicating. And I just felt like, you know, this it was is, meant to be. It was meant to be. It was meant to be. All right, all right, Janet. So this, I got to back up now because I definitely now want to see what's in that garage. I'm gonna show you what's in that garage. All right, hit sure. the door. Oh my god. <laughs> oh my gosh. I mean, the color is amazing. It's so it's a 2003 C5 50th anniversary ruby red, and it's got pristine white interior. Um, wait till you see that motor. It's got I cannot wait to hear this car. If you if you notice, there, there's no badges on it. He didn't believe in it. Mm -mm. No emblems. So if you know it's a Corvette, if you know Corvettes, I mean, this that's is that's kind of that's the thing. exactly what he said. You don't need you don't need a sign. That's exactly for what you he to said. know that this is yep. a Corvette. So it's got a 572 engine. Um, it does have an automatic transmission, so mm -hmm. even I can drive it. See, there you go. Just scoot that seat up real close. This is amazing. But when you look at this car, do you see your brother? Oh, a hundred percent, a hundred percent. You know, he's. He's 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 in the car with me when I'm driving it. He is. It's funny because I don't really refer to it as mine. Every time I refer to it, it's always, well, Ronnie's car is in the driveway. Ronnie's car is this. Ronnie's car is that. And I can only imagine the heads you turn when you are driving this thing around, which you have not done a ton of. I haven't done yet. a ton of. Um, honestly, I did get a woo. <laughs> at the, at we'll take a woo. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I like woo. You gonna take me for a ride? I think I'm giving you a ride. Let's do it. Let's, Let's do go. it. I don't think we're coming back either. All right. <laughs> I don't think so. Take off. Let's do it. <laughs> oh my gosh, it's really low. Oh my god, it's Woo! right up. This is so good. This is so beautiful. I mean, the color and the sun. It's incredible. Just incredible. Super smooth. I swear to God, I feel like Ronnie is riding here with us, right here in the middle. You're smiling. I'm, I'm overwhelmed. I'm overwhelmed by everything. This is what joy feels like for our people. And that's what's in our garage. All right, so you're saying, I want to see more cars. We have more cars for you. We have Mustangs, Corvettes. MGs, Challengers, Porsches, Lamborghinis. We even have a working fire pole in a garage. That's a long story. All of the episodes are streaming right now on Local 4 Plus. But hey, maybe you have something in your garage that you'd like us to see. Just hit me up by email at garage at WDIV.com. And then maybe me and the crew will come check out and see what's in your garage. My big thanks to Bill and Melissa Cazera for allowing us to be here in their beautiful garage at M1. That's going to do it for me. I'm Christy McDonald. I'll see you next time on What's in That Garage.